Hello and welcome to a week of me sharing with y'all my nightly self-care unwinding rituals after work. I thought I would film this over a course of a week to also represent some of the nuances in my routines and I want to go through this with y'all and highlight my intentions and really my philosophy of unwinding after work, its importance for my mental health, for my happiness and for keeping going with working, being a content creator, being an entrepreneur, just doing a bunch of stuff, being an artist <laughs> and I need structure for this so this video can underline some of the structure I try to maintain in my life. For example, right now my work is done and I'm about to study. So if you want to hear more about my habits, my studying and how I try to have fun after work, keep on watching. Five PM for me means work is done and I try to slowly tune out any work related thoughts, which again is extremely hard when you work for yourself. So for this I give myself 30 minutes of free time, which is when I can check social media, but honestly I never feel better after, so usually I clean my office, organize my calendars, or stretch. Since I walk my dog at 6.30, I dedicate this hour that I have to studying. And recently I've considered studying Japanese again, so currently I'm trying to approach it by making time for it and building a habit as I did for French. In my video about building a study habit for French, I broke down the steps I used to approach building a language learning habit. And right now for Japanese, I'm building a study system, which means my focus is playing around, trying out and curating my resources to narrow down my favorites for moving forward. At the same time, I'm prioritizing just showing up this hour and dedicating my time to at least one activity each day to start building this habit. In the time I'm not studying French or Japanese, I love to read. I sort of rotate whether I read just novels in French or in English or whether I read self-help books. I honestly just find so much joy in spending my time expanding my knowledge and also learning new things outside of work truly helps me disconnect from it. But hey, I'm, I'm very grateful that for moments when I feel so depleted, I have a routine to sort of hold my hand and pull me through or drag me along into bed somehow and I've it allows me to sort of check off all of these things I know that are good for me you know okay good for my dog to walk my dog be in nature eat dinner take a shower brush my teeth you know <laughs> the minimum standard for feeling okay Before we move on with my de-stressing and self-care rituals, I wanted to talk about the jewelry I'm wearing for this entire week, which is all from the conscious jewelry brand Ana Luisa. I've worked with them for years now and am excited to be sharing these pieces with you today. I have been so excited to wear this jewelry. I've sort of been waiting for the self-care week and this is definitely a gift to myself as well. Um, just to feel a bit more elevated even in my free time since wearing jewelry and since creating my co-creations with Ana Luisa I've just recognized the value and how beautiful it is to have your staple everyday pieces so these are the pieces I'll be wearing all week and feeling my finest in so if you're interested in perhaps gifting yourself something or someone else check out the link in the description box Thank you to Anna Lisa, and let's move on. So I am going to bake. 
During the course of this week, I slowly got sick and lost my voice. And so you will get a peek into how I approach days where I need to take things a bit slower and be a bit more gentle. This day, I wanted to bake banana bread as a weekend snack for an adventure, which I didn't end up going on because I was sick. So when I'm not feeling well on a day or when my head just needs to recover from a dense work day, that is when I just chill and grab a snack and lay in the sun if it's good weather. And because I got sick this week, there were a couple of those days. Walking my dog has become a time for me to decompress from not just work, but a day of thoughts and emotions. My mind needs this quiet time as much as my body craves it. Make sure that you have a way to recover and live in the present moment from all of the time you spend in this World Wide Web. Because this right here is real life. This nature. This is real. And I work really hard to remind myself of my life because when it was the worst with my identity in work and on like my online identity, I felt like I didn't have a life outside of what I try to convey online. So that right now is my priority for staying sane and healthy. Often, especially now during the summer, we will sit at a well where bourbon can drink. I pick cherries and sit in the shade of a tree for a while. This entire time, I try to process whatever weighs on my shoulders and come to the present moment. Being outside, surrounded by calm and relatively quiet nature, helps me connect to the moment and bridges my mind to a state of meditation. Especially this week, once again, I'm noticing how hard it is or how much energy it takes to cook your own meals, cook from scratch, but above that, how much preparation. And even I, as someone who does not even go grocery shopping without planning out all my meals, sometimes I just don't feel like cooking something on a certain day. I do believe that cooking can be relaxing, except when you have a lot of plans if you're cooking something you're not so familiar with, then it can be a bit stressful. Although I aspire to be mindful while eating, I found that since I don't give myself any other time during the day to just consume something and watch something for fun, this is the only slot I have to watch YouTube videos or Netflix shows. Now, I sort of justify this as my immersion time, so this is when I ideally watch something in French, but recently it's also been in Japanese.
I do allow myself to listen to music just before bed because it's a lot easier for me to stop listening to a song and just turn it off than stopping to watch a YouTube video or a Netflix show. And this is me trying to set myself up for success. Welcome to my bathroom, feet, pads. I am going to talk about a bit about my shower routine. I used to hate showers, especially as a kid. It just didn't, wasn't something fun for me to do. I don't know if I would consider it fun today, but today I have so many other reasons why I enjoy my showers and that's sort of what I wanted to mention to y'all. As insignificant as a shower may seem, this short habit truly gives me a reset for the day. I feel rebirthed and refreshed, all of which help me wind down. Another thing about my showers is that I love implementing cold showers and I know that doesn't sound fun but once you discover how good cold showers feel on sore muscles and how refreshed you feel after I sort of see that feeling as the reward for taking cold showers Besides dancing my stress away, I always say a self-love mantra to end my shower and focus my mind on my well-being. My showers have become kind of spiritual. And if you're wondering, these showers are usually like five minutes <laughs> I don't have more time like I don't want to spend too much time in water so my showers are quite to the point but very intentional Isn't this beautiful? I just almost never see it. Y'all, don't ask me why I have a sore throat. I don't know. I don't know. This is my teeth hygiene combo pack. So I try to do all of these at the same time. I mean, not at the same time, but always together so that I don't start skipping out on them. So first I brush my teeth, then I go in with an interdental brush and then I go in with floss and I don't know if this is the recommended order but as far as I know my teeth are getting cleaner with each step and it's only on those nights I come home from a night out and it's probably 3 a.m. I can't stand up uh, that's when I wouldn't do this but that literally happens like three times a year <laughs> so those are my passes I always do this routine Along the lines of me being intentional with my consumption and the internet, I've also made it a priority not to use my phone or the internet in my bedroom. Plus, I don't really spend time in there except for sleeping. And this sort of sets the tone for the bedroom to be a place for me to just unwind and relax. I do like stretching, so there isn't actually a time during the day where I don't stretch. But especially before bed, I sort of like to get into this yoga mindset and intentionality of connecting back with my breath and doing a couple of stretches. So these have been my favorite ones I can do in bed.
What I do count as relaxing and unwinding is reading and journaling. So as I mentioned in my journaling video, I do plan in extra time in case I do want to journal. And sometimes I do that, sometimes I read in that time and sometimes I brush my dog, especially when his hair gets a bit longer <laughs> and messier. What I use daily is a lavender essential oil on my wrist and since this week I was starting to feel a little sick, I put it on in my diffuser which is also a beautiful ritual to have to put on your diffuser and you can time it just before bed. Yup, it's still pretty bright. Oh,